Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about our multiple channel research and development facility and we're going to look at room response. So there's really been four structural and, and treatment changes in the room over the last 18 months as I chase after the smooth response curve. And it really is a chase because certain frequencies, certain amplitudes are in certain places in the room and locating them, you know, it takes time. Uh, you can look at the numbers and you can tell pretty much frequency and location. A lot of the times you can't tell amplitude. That's the big thing, you know, how strong is it? So you look for these hot spots, as I call it, within the room and you play different sources. You play uh, songs that are uh, good in the low frequency um, situation and getting that energy into the room but that energy then you know finds little places in the room to hide starts resonating this is why i'm so adamant about you know closets and and containers and things like that within the room because you know they all produce resonances and you just never know which wavelength is going to like that area and you know find a home for itself so to speak so this first graph here that you can see, that's right out of our database. So we have a really good database of over 300 rooms now that we've built and measured. So we go in, when you give me the dimensions of your room, I go into the database. And I, 95% of the time, have exactly your dimensions in that database. So I'm able to tell you frequency problems, amplitude problems, and locational problems. So this first attempt was right out of our database. Now, this room size is kind of at the upper limits of our database. Our smallest room is 8, 10, 10. Our largest room is 40, 40, 40. So this is 15 uh, foot ceilings and 30, 40 foot lengths. So it's right at the upper end of our, our database. So this is the result that we got right, right out of the gate. Now that's treating, you know, four walls with our carbon technology. So it's pretty smooth, but you know, we got a couple plateaus there and, and you can see those uh, in the red circles. So we don't wanna have that kind of shelving going on. We wanna smooth, push on those peaks and kind of fill in the rest. So the process over the next three steps will be pushing on you know, those particular frequency areas. So you can see those highlighted in the red circles and you could almost guess circle number two to be the harmonic of the fundamental circle one right remember we talked about the relationship between fundamentals and harmonics we push on the fundamental we attenuate and treat the fundamental i think the middle cycle problems are going to come into play i always knew the room had an 80 cycle problem i just knew that right away um, from from years and years of working in rooms like this and with theater, you have to be conscious of that. You have to be conscious of all issues below 100 hertz with theater because you got multiple, you know, low frequency producing sources. You're going to have a lot of energy in the room. So phase one, you can see the resulting curve. Phase two, we brought in some of our modular units. And I focused really on the front wall because we have four front of the house speakers. You know, we split the center channel into the left center, right center. So I really have four full range speakers. So I'm gonna have a lot of pressure on that front wall. So we brought in our modules and you can see those here. They're just the two foot by two foot. And we added them behind the speakers. They're rear ported speakers. We had a lot of energy back there. I measured, you know, six, eight, 10 dB uh, extra. Then we, don't, and we just simply can't have that. So that area then turns into a speaker. So we're slowly reducing the pressure in the area. So you can see the, the effect of that in number two here. Improvement, still not what we want, but an improvement. This is a slow, painstakingly steady process. Just look at the last video we posted on DIY Done Right, part two. Look at the months and the months that Shalom put into this project. Okay, look at, just listen to the video, the step, I, I mean, this guy had no carpentry skill set. So he started from below zero. We recommend three to five years for all our DIY projects and a full shop. He had neither. 
So he had to relearn all or learn how to do all that stuff. So I don't want any crying from you guys out there who say, oh, this is too hard. Quit crying and get to work. But the bottom line here is getting a good room response is a series of tests. And it's a series of testing and measuring, measuring and testing. But it's, we call it voicing. So you're listening. You're looking at the numbers. I'm running RTAs constantly in this room every time I add treatment. Anytime I change the surface area coverage of the low-frequency management treatment in the room, I want to see what the result is. And you can see in real time. I can have my guys bring in a, an additional 100 square feet, and I can see the impact. I can see the bandwidth that it's going to impact. So it's very measurable. But in the beginning, we want guidelines because you're not going to get it 100% right out of the gate. Get as close as you can within budget and space availability. It's always the issue in these rooms. Do we have enough money and do we have enough space? I can fix any kind of problem, whether it's noise or treatment. If I got enough money and enough space, that's, those are the two limiting variables that I, you know, I don't have control over half the time. That's why I like building new rooms, because you start from a position of strength, not backing up, you know, fixing stuff so you get to a certain level that you can work on. Number three curve here that you see, we brought in more modules. Now, these were our one by one foot modules. This is a new product. I don't know if I'm going to launch it or not. You know, we have enough products, but it's a one foot by one foot cube with our ACDA 10 and our ACDA 12 technology. No foam on the face. This is just low frequency management. It's in a 37 pound cube. That cube contains our carbon technology. So I had a series of 20 or 30 of these made and I brought them into the laboratory and you can see the result in number three. So we're getting real close. And a lot of the problems, the pressure problems, are on that front wall. Because the side walls, even though they're 35, 37 feet, we got an extra 10 and 15 feet on both sides. The left channel actually has 20 feet because there's space behind the wall. So low frequency energy obviously goes through the wall. Some is reflected back into the room, some is attenuated, and some goes through the wall. That's just how low frequency energy works. That's why I always rail against soundproofing, because there's no such thing. You can't stop that energy. You can manage it. You can mitigate it. You can lower its nuisance value, but you're not going to proof anything. So that's the issue we have here. Then the fourth curve you see here, we added a few more cur cubes, increased the square footage, but notice from, I don't have it in front of me, but notice from about, 2K on, look at the smoothness in the curve there. That's when I added rows two and three to the diffusion sequences behind me. Remember, if you watch that video, we did a whole separate video on diffusion. We started with absorption on the rear wall, then one single row of quadratic, one dimension, then we did row two, and then we did row three. And watch that video because I talk about the big changes, uh, what happened. But look, there's the curve for the smoothness after 2K, 1500, whatever the, the curve is. You can see how smooth it is. That's diffusion. See, diffusion is a wonderful technology. But look what I had to go through in order to get it to respond like that. See, so it's a wonderful tool, but there's a lot of prerequisites and requirements that you have. Equal distribution of reverberation times in the room. Attack and decay, logarithmic in nature. There's a lot of things that you have to take into account. So people all the time, well, I want to I want to start with diffusion. And they make no mention of low frequency absorption first or middle frequency reverb management. And I'm I say, well, why do you want diffusion? Well, it looks cool. Or I have space over here. Boy, if I ever hear those two things again, I'll have a heart attack. Just because it looks good and you have space for it doesn't mean it's a viable treatment technology for your usage for your room. So, you know, stay focused on the task at hand and, and we'll get through it. So all in all, four attempts, 18 months. I'm pretty happy. I'm still going to chase it. It's what I do. I wish I didn't sometimes, <laughs> but it's what I do. 
So I just wanted to show you all how possible it is. There's no processing in any of these measurements. It's all real time stuff, same song, all of that stuff. So it's, it can be done, you know, and I get it. No, no, none of you out there are going to want to do what I do here. Nobody would have a room like this. No wife would accept this room ever. I mean, I, I bring uh, women in here for demonstrations. They freak out. So, you know, that's just the way it goes. It's a research and development facility. So nobody would really do this. But I wanted to go through this 18 month exercise really for me because I had no experience with multiple channels and um, show you that it can be done if you've got the budget and you got the space to do it. So this is our 18 month journey uh, through chasing the green snake as we call it and gives you a little idea of the power of treatment, even in a large room, which is 35, tw uh, 15 and 25. So good, good size volume. Moving to a new facility, hopefully double this size with 20 foot ceilings. And we're gonna do a full blown Atmos system with, with the ceiling and uh, go from there. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.